Well, I'd um, like to welcome uh, Isidoros Diakides, a Labour candidate for the Tottenham Green Ward. Um, I wondered if you could just, just introduce yourself again and just give a kind of a brief little idea of what's brought you to politics um, and, and brought you to and, and some success stories of, 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 of your involvement and, and how, how long you've actually been involved in politics, please. Well, I've always been very interested in politics, but the reason why I decided to get in, sort of like practically, for years I used to criticise all my local councillors and MPs, until uh, they started one after the other telling me, well, if you are that clever, why don't you get in and do it yourself? <laughs> and at one time I decided to take the challenge, and I got stuck since then, so I've been now 15 years a councillor, and... Uh, uh, I would say that uh, my main interest in what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, try really to improve the conditions for the poorest people. My, my main interests are around poverty, equality and sustainability, if I put it that way. And uh, this is what I have been trying to do in this area as well for the last few years. I'm not sure what people think, how successful I am, I suppose the elections will show that. Uh, but uh, I think we have changed some things here. It's one of the poorest areas in the country and it's probably the most cosmopolitan area in Europe as well, with so many uh, diverse minorities, religious, ethnic and, and various other aspects of life. And I think gradually we have started turning it around and what I like a lot is as well that there is a little bit more faith in this area than before that if you get organized if you get involved if you have a say something changes has an impact which when I first started I thought that there was a complete cynicism nobody believed that anything will change or any of the politicians or the councils or the MPs will make any difference there's something changing slowly you know, here as well. I quite like that. We have now one of the lovely, uh, liveliest uh, voluntary sectors, residence associations, etc. Probably in the borough and probably in London. But I'll stop here and see what else you want to ask me. <laughs> um, and so, any specific um, projects or, or kind of things you've been involved in that what springs to mind that for you, you know, kind of, um, kind of keep your faith in, in the process and keep you going? I think there have been quite a lot and some of them are not very visible in the sense that you don't want to advertise them. One of the biggest problems in the area has been crime, especially since the clear uh, uh, King's Cross and a lot of the drugs tra 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 traffic started moving in these areas like ours. And of course we closed a lot of crack houses, we rehabilitated quite a lot of people uh, around this drugs and prostitution sort of area. But of course we don't advertise very much, but I do think that there has been a substantial change on that one, both on the way we approach the, pro the problems and by doing some investment on physical things. It's more than a thousand extra street lights in that area we have uh, created over the last few years and removed a lot of pockets that people could hide behind and uh, we pioneered effectively the safer neighborhoods teams here and we're working very effect effectively on that one. But the one though I would put us, I quite like the change, is encouraging uh, the local kind of community spirit. And uh, when I first came here, people were saying that only in the west of the borough where they reach middle class people get organized, but in poor areas like Tottenham, you won't get that kind of thing. Well, now we get more people in our neighborhood assemblies than in the West. We've got a lot more active residence associations and campaign groups, like the Ward's Corner group. Well, would you say that those people are, would you, you know, could be described as middle class? Well, no, it's a mixture. I think uh, it is a mixture. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, like Long and Close Residence Association is a very working class residence association. Oh, would you say that's an exception rather than a rule? No, I think that uh, I've seen quite, uh, it, it, no, everywhere I go around, and around Tottenham chances the people who get there and organise around different things. But even on things like the Woods Corner Coalition, probably the front people appear to be more, you know, the middle classes. 
but those who are involved turn up to the events. If you see, it's, it's from all classes, all races, all ages. So I think there is something genuine happening here. It's not a middle class area. It has a middle class you know, contingency, but it's uh, quite uh, a, a diverse and mixed area. Because would you say so we're actually in the war's corner, Yeah, a location which will be demolished if the Granger plan, backed by the Labour um, Council, um, you, where, where do you stand with the Ward's Corner? Oh, well, where I stand is, is, is no. I thought that it was a mistake from the beginning what it did, and I have argued it and I have advocated very strongly. And of course, we've got a democratic process, and that's how it happened. I have to say, that you learn in politics that the road to disaster sometimes is uh, paved by the best intentions. I think my colleagues meant well. <laughs> it, it just miscalculated on that particular issue. And in the end, we ended up with the worst of all the worlds. As far as I'm concerned at the moment, we've got a blighted site and no clear way forward as it goes, while we could have got a result by now and have turned the, the place around. Uh, I don't blame anybody specifically for that, but, uh, you know, because as I say, they meant well. Nobody put any money in the pocket or something like this. It had any vested interest to go that way. It's just what they thought was the best. It's just that it was a mistake. Um, how, how do you reconcile being a member of the party that's actually pushing this forward in your ward? Well, I don't know whether it's a party political issue, Jeremy. Look, um, you had, for example, the Wars Corner Coalition, you had before the elections Boris Johnson coming here and say, ah, oh, definitely was so that. When he became a mayor and he had the opportunity to block it, he didn't. You know, he just changed, you know, he stuck straight away. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I think it's not party political. The fact that some others jump on the bandwagon is because they are out of it at the moment. When they are in, in power, they might do something different. Um, I don't see it as a party political issue. And uh, in the Labour group, or let's say the majority group, there was a, a, a real split down in the middle. You know, we had a really serious arguments again and again about that. And. Uh, in the end, one side prevailed over the other. Genuinely, I suspect probably most of my colleagues regret it now. But uh, once they went down in a particular road, they had to see it through as you know, uh, as far as it would go. Uh, but I don't see it as a party political issue. That is uh, one of those things that you won't find anything in Dutch capital about it or some political thing about the principle. It's just an issue of a judgment that, in my opinion, the council made the wrong judgment at that particular time. Mm. And, uh, on, a, on a kind of a, on a, on a, on a lighter note, possibly, if, uh, say, someone comes to you, or maybe yourself, have you ever had a time where you've got the ice cream van coming down the road and it's just so unbelievably loud, you can barely hear yourself think. What, what, what would you, what, have you ever gone out and had a chat with an ice cream van? Have you, would you, what, would you, what would you do in that situation when you're trying to watch EastEnders or whatever you watch? Well, I, 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 I can't relate to that particular example, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, the, the ice cream van. But if you say it's sort of in a more general way where there is antisocial behaviour, when there is... Uh, some operation that is very disruptive to people's lives and uh, generally, then yes, we've done that and uh, I'm known as well to get into arguments. For example, next to us here is Brunswick Park and there were a few lads with some ferocious dogs dominating the place completely and uh, parents with the little kids who wanted to use the place space there, they were scared to go in. I would go in and I would argue with them and sometimes they would set the dogs against me and all that kind of thing. So we, d we do do these things and some of the drug pushes around quite often that have threatened me, for example, things like this, because I will speak to them out, you know, when there's something wrong. Um, but you've got to be as well careful. We're living in a big urban area. It's very tightly um, sort of built. Uh, People have to, on the one hand, respect others, but also to tolerate to a certain extent others. It's just a matter of a judgment. You know, we live in London, we're not living in the countryside. Therefore, an element of cars passing by or some noise, you know, when the pub around the corner is open, you know, we have to be accepted. It's just a matter of making a judgment of where is the limit, you know, that you protect everybody's rights. Yeah.
All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, lovely. Well, thanks very much for your time, Mr. Okay. Good thank luck you. in the uh, in the elections. Thank you. Take care. Brilliant. Bye.